good. Come on. So if that were your back off. There you go. If that were your kid walking next to you, you would not allow the neighbor kid to come up and pick on your kid. Here, Diva. Here, Diva. Now, don't call. All right. Now, no, she's fine. This dog, for her entire year and a half, has been a baby. It's actually a positive thing that she's actually stepping up and asserting herself in something. I don't have a problem with that. But when she starts that, we have to show her what happens. Quiet. You said I'll be relaxed. We have to show her exactly. You can take him over. There you go. Good dog. You're going to give her a rug. You're going to do all the things that don't pet her too much. She thinks you like her then. Hello, you. Why aren't you attractive? By George, I believe we're almost ready here, Stephen. It's going to be a really neat day. what the dog knew to their lifestyle. So when he was not quite a year old, he came here for training. So they had him a few months and were having some struggles with him. He came here and spent a month, which was the saving of this dog. The week after he went back, by the way, he lives in New York, or he lived in New York City, which is not the prime <laughs> environment for certain dogs. Um, they lived right in the city, and about a week after the dog got back home, the woman, the wife actually flew in, rented a car, and drove back from here to New York uh, with the dog to make the easy transition. And he was doing great. A week after they got home, the husband called me and said he's forgotten everything he knows. Okay. I said, are you tying him? Yes, I am. Well, you know, after the conversation, I said, where are you tying him? Out on the balcony over the traffic. You talk about an insecure dog. Well, then it was a series of conversations with the breeder. He was very dissatisfied with the dog. Well, the dog was fine. He was dissatisfied with the choice of dog. This is a hunting dog. This is a, an active dog. If you don't structure this dog and give it jobs to do, you got a problem. And a problem they had. So after a few years... He went back to the breeder. And thank goodness it's a responsible enough breeder that took this dog back. And as I understand it, I think she even paid him for the dog, which really is generous of her. From her place, she she has show dogs, okay, and she has a busy life. It's hard to have extras. So he was then placed with a woman, jump on a plane, head to the other end of the country. She knew all about training, 
and all you add is love and happy. Well, with no security, no crate, no limits, no nothing, um, this dog ended up to be a real problem. He was becoming aggressive. He was becoming just out of control. He got into that cycle, just escalating. Well, then he went to Sarah, who is president of the Lakeland Club and also very involved in rescue. She's a good friend of mine. And she said, I think he'd be fine with some time. And because he started here with his training, bless her heart, Sarah drove the six hours down here and delivered it. Now that's dedication from some very responsible people. Now Harry, I changed his name back to Harry. Got rid of all the cutesy stuff. And Harry lived for a time in the big house. When he came, he was angry. He would grab things and he would shake them. He'd, he'd fight with other dogs next to him. He was just angry. He had been lied to. He had been given away to earn praise, but then it was never carried through. This is a guy that's trying to do a day's work and he keeps getting fired. He didn't want to be hired because he was cute. He wanted to be given a job. He wanted to earn a paycheck. They wanted him to settle for lose. It isn't love. Love is doing what's necessary to succeed. So Harry was pretty miffed in the kennel. And he's probably been there four or five months. No pressure. Hey, you are fine. Once it, the time was appropriate, I started getting Harry out for short pieces of time. We made working with us the highlight of his week. Not daily. We made him want to come out of the kennel. When he got to the point where he really wanted out of the kennel, he was to a point where it was his choice whether he was going to be put down or whether he was going to be worked with. He was very angry. He was grabbing things and just really, really miffed. Finally, it got into acceptance, and he started to come down. We didn't have any dogs next to him, so he actually used up um, three kennels in many cases because we didn't want to put any additional pressure on him and cause him to be even more angry. He had things to chew on, but he had protection. He, had, he was basically solitary. And continued to get him out once every week or a couple weeks. But when he started coming out at that point, the sessions got longer. Then some nice people, friends of Dale's, contacted me and said, we've really seen how Maggie is. Do you have any nice dogs? <laughs> and I said, why, yes, I do. Because at that point, we had all the anger out of it. Good boy, Harry. We had a dog that no longer was distracted by noises, no longer felt threatened, no longer was worried about somebody lying to him. And he had enough times out of the kennel that I had refreshed his memory about training. This is a rescue dog as far as I'm concerned. Because rescue without rehabilitation is pretty worthless. This dog would have failed in any home he went into. He would have bitten, he would have fought with another dog, he would have probably grabbed a child. And he would not have been fighting. This dog would have failed miserably. As it is, huh, oh, Harry? Are you a good boy? Look at you, Sid. What an excellent dog. What do you think is the biggest worry?
worry I have with this dog. <coughs> that the home that he's placed in is not <coughs> enough for him as he walks through the door and starts doing happy again. Come here, Harry. Wait. Hey. Thank you very much. Rescue dogs are simply employees. Hey. Okay, he called me on a mistake. I didn't say W-A-I-T or S-D-A-Y. He was exactly right. You little twerp. Good boy. <laughs> he has to have an opinion. He's not stupid. Harry, come on. Come on, Harry. Good boy. So at this point, Easy, Harry. It would be very tempting for a person to watch me do this and say, well, I can do that too. No, because they haven't spent the months of absolute precision and, and absolute deliberate handling that I have. Good boy, Harry. They also don't have a room full of trustworthy dogs and people. Nothing wrong with this dog. Easy, girls and boys. Good boy, Harry. I know. Good boy. Come here, Harry. Come on, you can do it. Oh, no, I can't. No, I can't. Did you capture him? By the way, Hades, don't. Hades doing really good, too. Hayes learning what it's like to be a good dog. Easy. Harry, here. Come on. Here. Wait. Good wait. You see that decision? He hesitated. Said you didn't say sit. Okay. It's cool, dog. Come here, Harry. Down. Down. Harry, down. 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 Good down. This is a rehabilitated dog, in my humble opinion. What's Harry's new job going to be now? Well, we're going to establish some goals before he goes. Um, I insist that people visit a dog at least three times. They came up and learned about the breed. I turned lots of dogs loose. They saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. They saw them all dirty, covered with sheep poop. They were still liking the breed, so I said, well, maybe. So then I got Harry out. He was stinky. We want to show them at their worst. Anybody who likes a dog that's pretty. No. You gotta see. You gotta meet somebody that's had the flu, and then you know whether you really like them or not. <laughs> not when they're all dressed up at a party. Right. Right. Easy, yeah. good boy. Are you an excellent dog? You are. <laughs> now Harry was really weirded out in the crate. He's actually doing very well in the crate. Um, he wears a weight on his neck all the time, and that's helped him come down. Are you an excellent dog? I thought so. You be easy. Good boy. Oh, what a good boy. So, between the breeder, the training, this dog is salvageable. Because there's three pieces that go into a good dog. One is the breeder. They have to raise a good, healthy dog. One is the dog. The dog has to be willing. The dog has to be able to trust. It has to listen. It has to be attentive. The third piece is the person who gets the dog has got to do what's necessary to maintain that dog. You cannot go buy a computer and let it float in the water and then be mad at the person that built it. 
You can't run your car with no oil in it and then sue the company. You can't blame bad behavior on a breeder, especially after you've paid for the training. So there's no just training the dog. The important thing is the people. So before this dog is handed over for even a home visit, it's required that this dog be handled in class so I can observe. You come to work your dog, you may work your dog and you may not. You will. Um, by the way, the people are going to come up Saturday to class. I think they'll be happy. They've had Dolly about two weeks, yeah, something like great. that. Dolly was featured, I think on last week, I believe, and things were kind of shaky. They had brought Dolly into the home and wanted her to just fit right in. She'd been in a puppy mill, raised in a pen. She had absolutely no idea how to make decisions. So we had a couple of good talks. Quiet. And thank goodness for intelligent people. I was pretty hard on them, but we listened, which is excellent. Dolly was with me for the weekend. Dolly got a chance to be imprinted by dogs, meaning Diva was one. So Dolly would not go out on a line to go to the bathroom. She wasn't used to that. She wanted somebody out there with her, and then she would just be around your feet. I tied her out there, and she just had to go. Well, finally she got that idea once she understood they're having no problems. So there are people who are very good dog owners but aren't quite as talented in the training department. There's nothing wrong with that, if you recognize it. They didn't have a lot to do. Their expectations aren't super high, although I think their expectations are going to rise as they see what a nice dog this really is. Aren't she cute? Move that back out where I had it. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> it's a puppy. Everything within reach is fair game. That's why a dumbbell works really well. She can't go anywhere. Now over here, we have Marley. Marley was with a veteran early in the spring. Um, had an ugly incident. He pushed the dog a little farther than the dog was prepared to go. He had bad information to start with. This dog had already had a bite history. So he was starting at a huge disadvantage. He too would have been better off with a trained dog or come and learn to train the dog, not own the dog. Set the dog up, collar slipped off, dog bit. He, he gave the dog a big meaty bone. They'd never conditioned the dog for such a thing before. Dog grabbed his hand. He's got diabetes, so consequently, he's on blood thinner and all sorts of stuff. So he was scared then. It was another traumatic experience. So Marley has had the whole summer to just veg. Marley is doing just super. He's had some time with no pressure, and he's feeling good. The boy, Harry. All right, this is Haiti. Um, Haiti's been here just about a week. The cool thing about Haiti is uh, she didn't need a lot of downtime. She'd already had it. So Haiti has actually gone right to work. Now, a lot of people, when they get a dog, they come to training class. And they train, and they train, and they train. And they train, and they train. But they never put it into practical application. Quiet. 
the, when you really want to be successful with training, you need to train the dog and then use it. Not sit around and practice and take them back through kindergarten for five years. They need to use it. Now, Haiti is doing very well. She's sharp puppy to begin with. She's prime age. She's got enthusiasm to burn. Good girl. So I just thought it would be fun for the people that, uh, hey, now easy. Thank you. I thought it would be fun for everybody to see how she's doing. She's actually off lead outside. I walk her about midnight. Not a lot of distractions. She's actually doing some tracking already. Doing just super. Good girl. Now, I'm not taking the fire out of her. Good girl. The last thing I want to do is lose attitude. This is not a dog I'd be training for someone else unless they want a performance. Easy, Haiti. Easy. Good girl. Now, just like any other good parent, you're fine. Leave it. Good. Just like any good parent, I carry money, but I don't necessarily share it. Come on, Haiti. Good girl. She's got a really good, come on. I'm not going to mess around. Come on, Haiti. Haiti, I hate that short name. Good girl. I got to come up with a name to call her. I don't like that name. Huh? It's not hard enough. Stallion. Now, she's a girl. Good girl. Off. I am not correcting her for the most part for jumping. The dog. She's perfect for me. That's enough. Easy. Talk to your puppy. Easy. Easy. Good girl. Come here. Come here. We're just about ready to start retriever training. And this is the first step, a good recall. You ready? She likes this game. You ready? You wait. You wait. Take it. Take it. That's circling now. Wait here. Pretty. Easy. You ready? Easy. Hey. Take it. Hey, you here? Pretty. So... When I train my own dogs, because I have a core with them. Come on, hey. Good. You saw last week that when I said, come on, she better be moving or I'm going to get her. Good girl. She's not going to let me get away. Think about it. Hey, you here? Come here. Hey, here. Thank you. It means the same thing every time. If I wanted to take her into a park, I'd put a stake in the ground, and I could do the same thing. She circles. You are a herder. Don't move fast. Pretty cool dog. Just the crumb. We want to be able to call her about three times. So you're going to go back over both of them. So we want quarters in this circle. If she comes to you and you have not called her, you're going to turn your back on her. But you have to be outside where she can reach. Now you don't have to turn yet. It's only if she comes to you without being called. Okay, Ruby, go ahead. Wait. Are you using here? 80, here. Good, here. You see? Good girl. Tail? 80, 80, here. 80, here. Here. Good. Good. Here. Now, is that sound 
sounds like an elementary school teacher, doesn't it? I want big dog. All right. None of this happy crap. No. I don't care which way you go, but you can't help her. You better not bend over and call this dog. This dog, I am not going to get in that habit. So if you can't play nice. <laughs> okay, Mark. Ready? Okay. Hey. Now. Hey, here. Hey, here. Hey, here. Oh, well, she's good. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. There. Good girl. Good now, girl. I do not want to have to call Goofy. She's going to be drawn to me. Ruby, call. Eighty. Here, eighty. Good girl. Easy. Good. Beautiful. Very nice. Haiti. Haiti. Here. Haiti. Here. Easy. Good. <coughs> Much better. Hey, here. Good job, Dale. <laughs> Good job, Haiti. <laughs> now, in a family, think how nice this is. The dog comes to the person that calls. The dog is doing recalls for even the youngest child. Even a little kid like Dale. Hey, easy. I know it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> hey, here. Hey, here. Hey, here. Hey, here. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Dale? Hey. Hey, here. Don't here. say her name twice. Good. Good. Here. Good job. Ruby? Hey, here. Good. Here. Easy. Nice. Excellent job. Good. Hey, here. Pretty. Now, this is the transfer of authority. She can't just come to me. Now, most of the time, I want my command to trump anybody else's. So if you called her and I called her, she darn sure better come here. But we'll deal with that later. I just don't want her so fixated on a person. This keeps even a five-year-old in the running. So you can actually take flour or lime or something and make yourself a make yourself a marker, and the dog can come back and forth between two people. Hey, come on, girl. See. Good job. Thank you. I have one left. Go ahead and eat it. Yeah. <laughs> you can give it to Maggie. I bet she'd like yeah. it. Down. <laughs> Get it down. 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 But this is a really good exercise for anyone who wants to reinforce the recall. Mine. Hey, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Out. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. This is her desire to do the guard type stuff. Now I told Lisa that I would put that I would ask you to put this on so she could see this. A good dog knows how to do that. And you better get out of her circle. <laughs> But a good dog's controllable, so it's not dangerous. This is actually a game to her. She's not aggressive to me. She's aggressive to that silly toy. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Now that's an uninhibited bite. Get it. Get that thing. Get it. You're trying to chew it in half, you little turkey. <laughs> she can't do anything wrong. Get it. Now when you tug against the dog, you become adversaries. When you tug against the tree, you're just involved in it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Good dog. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get that thing. The most important part of this is 
Oh, this is wonderful for frustration. This is what I did to Harry. Is give him something to take Harry, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Thank you. Leave it. Last week she came off easier. The more you do this, easy. The more you do this, the more power you have. The more important it is, you can do it. Get it. Get it. Good. Get it. Now this is the best thing in the world for an aggressive dog, is to channel that aggression towards an object, not towards a person. If you go out and wrestle with this dog, you go out and tug with her, then you're going to take away. Because if she bites you like that, you're going to get mad at her. Get it. Now, this is what I do with Kate. If you say get it, hey, leave it. Hey, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Thank you. Don't. Good. Now, when you turn them on, you have to be able to turn them off. This is the healthiest thing you can do with that puppy, is to let her go out and play just as tough as she can be and show her that you can call her off. That's the most important thing, that you can call them off, that you can walk past this easy. Leave it. Hey, you leave it. If I say leave it, it means don't even think about it. Leave it. Now she's an, a seven-month-old puppy. She's that 17-year-old kid that wants what, he want, what she wants when she wants it. She made a mistake when she wouldn't let go. She didn't commit a crime. She didn't want to leave the party on time. Oh, well. You're going to anyway. I'll embarrass you. Chucky mm -hmm. darn. Good dog. Would you recommend this for most of us? Every dog. Because what, what we try to do in kids and dogs is we try never to play aggressively with them because then they wouldn't ever think about it. That's the biggest lie there is. You teach them to turn it on and then you teach them to have a good off switch. Then you won't have a problem with aggression. So we've got a lot of dogs now we're encouraging her to come up. Okay? You encourage her to get tough, and then all of a sudden it's out of control. Because they haven't thought of it yet doesn't mean it's not in there. Good. Most rescue dogs, their biggest problem is nobody teaches them the off switch. Good. Now my goal... I can turn around, that's not a problem. Leave it. My goal is I can walk with this thing and she leaves it alone. It's not hard to turn around. It's that off, that serious off switch. Not a dimmer, off. Good. Leave it. Hey, you better leave it. Off comes your head. Leave it. You leave it. Leave it. This is torture. Leave it. Leave it. Don't you dare. Leave it. Is she growling? No, she's trying to get it. Leave it. No, she has to know it's mine. Good. Leave it. <laughs> you big thief. Good dog. Was that a successful training session? Absolutely it was. And the more you can do that, the more that believes you, that dog believes you are powerful indeed. But if somebody breaks into your home and that dog is turned on, you better be able to turn them off.